Hey, what's going on guys? Hayden here, also known as Zebs, bringing you another tutorial. And this tutorial will be a remake tutorial, like I said on my last tutorial. I said tutorial four times, five times now in a row, but anyway. This is going to be a remake for render settings, because I feel my first tutorial on this was uh, kind of lacking. I didn't really explain what things did and everything, just kind of like copy and paste. So, today I'm going to go into depth of what things do, things like that. So to start off with, I'm using Cinema 40 R15, so, and if you've never opened up Cinema before, this top bar, very useful tools, but today we're going to be working with these three, or this one, but, yes, so we're going to start with this one. Now, if you have any earlier versions or later versions, the symbol might look a little different, but it's pretty much the same. So, in here, it's going to start out with output. Now, output is basically making your dimensions. It also makes it, if you're going to make an intro, you can edit it instead of uh, rendering one frame, it's going to render how many over frames you set it. But we're going to only mess with the width and height today. So for width, 1920, and then height, 1080, which is 1080p. And that's all we're going to do for the output. Now this is your dimensions, so if you've done any gaming ever, which you probably have, you know what dimensions are. So saving is basically where you're going to put your output to be. So, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, for the file, this is basically where you're going to set your destination for it's going to save to. So, click this triple dot thing here, and it's going to open up your save file. Now, save it wherever you like. I like to save my renders on my desktop. And then the next thing, what you want to do is you want to name it. So, I'm just going to put it as render. And what this will do is every time you click this middle one, this middle thing, which is the full render, it's going to save it to this destination, which is very useful. It saves a lot of time. And the next thing is. Uh, I'm just gonna set it back to this. Your thing is gonna, your format's gonna be Photoshop PSD. What you want to change it to is PNG, which will make it transparent, so it's easy to work with in uh, Photoshop. Now, if you just left it like this and you clicked render, you made something rendered out. You're gonna notice there's gonna be a black screen behind it, which means PNG. As you may know, if you've done any design or anything, you'll know that PNG is transparent, so it should have like a checkered background or like a white background, so you can only shows that render. But if you're to render out, it's going to have a black background because alpha channel is unchecked. You want to check that, which will make it where it's actually transparent. So that's pretty much what you want to do in here. Uh, I don't really mess with anything else in here, so yes. So multipass, we're not going to be working with anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing, I can't say that, but and it's very useful. It kind of makes it where... Uh, how small pixels are kind of it's really hard to explain but again if you've done any gaming you know what it is um, it's basically instead of having like pixelated edges it's gonna be very smooth and sorry about that my fridge just turned on I don't know if you can hear it or not but we're gonna set that to best uh, leave it at one times one and then the max 16 by 16 and we're gonna leave all this same uh, we're not gonna mess with any of this uh, nor this this but we are gonna go into effect and you're gonna go to ambient inclusion and then global illumination, depth of field, object glow, and that'll be all. So ambient inclusion and global illumination is what makes shadows look very nice, but this will really kill your render times. So what we're going to do is in general go to Go to ambient inclusion. Hold on. In here, and then, all right. Go into your global illumination. Global illumination. Go record density. Make it high, and then let's see here. Samples high. And what this will do is it'll make the shadows look even nicer, but the render times will be a little long. So if you, oops, if you don't have um. A good computer just keep it at what it was so medium and then I think it was low for this one but we're just gonna leave out that depth of field you don't really have to mess with anything here just have it checked same as object glow just have it checked and as you can see I'm just gonna make something quick uh, just get a cube here um, and then let me get some lights here so the settings will actually do something so if I do this, and then shadow soft, and then let me get another light to do the other side here. And then if I was to render this out, it's gonna take a while because all these settings, well, maybe not, Never mind. Well, let me just quickly make a material. 
Uh, I'll just do this. Displacement. Uh, four. Oops. I'm just going to select this. I'm not really making a cool material. I'm just kind of making something quick here. I'll do bump. I guess doesn't matter. Boom. Okay, so we have a material. I'm just gonna do this. Cubic seamless. Now, if I was to render this out, it's gonna take a little bit of time because of lighting and things like that. Now, the way my computer is, it does all the other stuff you're gonna see in a second really quickly, so you don't have to worry about all that. But yeah, just gonna start rendering. But this is basically how you get some no good. Um, render settings so hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys um next week i'm gonna do a tutorial on how to do my known vine style which you guys have heavily requested so look forward to that um and then after that i'm probably gonna do a style on uh i call it the goo style kind of uh, if you want to see it look on my portfolio um but anyway i'm zebs and i'm out peace